Uh, what's up guys? Welcome to another beautifully dark episode. So we are out here in the Gila National Forest again and tonight I'm going to show you guys how to do star trails. I'm going to use the drift method. Freaking incredible. Ground F-16 for that to get that sunburst. So I get a lot of requests from this and this is definitely my favorite subject. Astrophotography is by far my favorite part of photography. If you guys follow my channel, you probably know that already. Uh, if you don't and you're new here, welcome. I love the stars and I love tea and we're gonna start both right now. All right, we got the important things going. The tea is going. I've got my other camera, my 5D4, about uh, 20 meters over that way, shooting the North Star, and it's time lapsing. Oh, that's done. Oh, that's warm. Oh, he is. Okay, now that the tea is done, let's talk about some stars. So what are the things that we need for star trails? There's two ways to do star trails, and the first thing that you need, obviously, is a tripod. So on that note, real quick, while everybody's still watching, let's talk about the giveaway. My buddy Mike, this guy right here, he is giving away a Benro Slim tripod, which is the exact tripod that I'm using on my 5D4 over there to take this time lapse. It's also the same tripod that I gave away this summer, and you can check out a review of that here. But in short, it's a great little tripod. Uh, it's not my go-to tripod for like my 1DX2, which is filming this, or even my 5D4 for most things, but it is my go-to travel tripod, and it's fantastic for that. It's super lightweight, and it can hold both of my cameras. Okay, so that little plug out of the way. Uh, the link for Mike's channel will be in the description below, so head over there and check out his giveaway video if you want to try to win one. And if you do go over there and subscribe to his awesome channel, because his channel is just like mine, make sure you leave a comment and tell him I sent you over there. Okay, so the next thing you need is a super fast and super wide lens. Uh, the faster the better and the wider the better. What do I mean by fast? I mean a very big opening. So smaller the number, bigger the opening. So my favorite Astro lens is actually a super cheap lens. It's called the Rokinon 14 millimeter, uh, and it's a 2.8. I have the T 3.1 version, which is a cinema version, but same thing. We're not gonna get into that at all. Uh, but just know that T 3.1 is pretty much the same thing as F 2.8. So there are faster lenses, uh, like the one that I'm filming with right now, and the one that I took this shot with, that's the uh, Canon 24 millimeter F 1.4 L. Uh, Mark II, and that is a very expensive lens. But you don't need expensive lenses to take Astro shots. The 14 that I mentioned, the Rokinon 14, which I have linked in the description below, is only uh, like $300 brand new, and you can find it on eBay even cheaper. And it's all manual focus, so that's great for the stars. And I actually prefer the 14 to this 24, unless I need something like, unless I need that 1.4, I prefer the 14 because it actually has, uh, it's actually, higher image quality when it comes to astro stuff because of something called coma. If you don't know what coma is, this is coma. It's when the stars at the edge of the camera stretch out and start to look uh, elliptical shaped. And the 24 is really bad with that. The 14 is one of the best lenses out there in fighting coma and astro photographers love that. Okay, so enough of that. Uh, you can do it even if you have a, something that isn't 2.8 or 1.4 or whatever, you're just gonna have to up your ISO, lower your shutter speed. And by lower, I mean longer shutter speed. So leave it open for longer. The next most important thing is focal length. And we need to know the focal length so you can do longer shots, but you generally want a wider angle lens. And the reason being is because we wanna follow something called the 500 rule. So we're gonna take our focal length and we're gonna divide our focal length by 500. Divide. 500 by our focal length. Math is good. So if I have this 14, I divide 500 by 14, then that will tell me my maximum shutter speed before the rotation of the earth causes a star motion blur. And we don't want that. So if you have something like the 14, you can get away with 30 seconds. So the 24, you can only get away with 20 to 25 seconds. 35 the same thing, the higher, the, the longer your focal length goes, the shorter time you're gonna be able to leave your shutter open. So like I can take perfectly good night shots with this Tamron 45 and I took this shot here, I can only leave this thing open for like 10 seconds. 
but that's what I did. I left it open 10 seconds, f1.4, and just up the ISO, and then I'm able to get stuff like this. It's a lot closer, and it gives you a different perspective. So whatever lens you have, just know that you can still do it. Just keep the 500 rule in mind to figure out your optimum shutter speed. Now let's talk about focus. So focus is by far the hardest thing to do when we're doing astro shots. So if you don't have a manual lens or a lens that has the focus dial on it where you can see uh, where infinity is, then what you're gonna need to do is put it in live view and then zoom in on the brightest star you can find and pinpoint that. Or if you can see the horizon or something really far away, then make sure you're focused on that and then adjust accordingly. So live view, 10 times zoom in as far as you can and then try to make that star look like a pinpoint and that will help you get your focus at infinity. So if you do have a lens like any of the ones that I've talked about, the all my Tamrons, um, the, the Canon, all the Canon L series lenses and the Rokinon, um, all of that, all of those lenses do have the infinity sign. So if you see the infinity sign, then you wanna line up the little tick where it shows the focus to the, the infinity line. Okay, so we got all the basic stuff down. We got tripod, we got lens, we got uh, focusing. So once you have all that stuff down, then we're ready to set up the composition. So what you're gonna wanna do for star trails, you can do it anywhere, but generally when you see stuff like this, you get that beautiful circle around Polaris. So if you guys know anything about astronomy, you know that the North Star does not move. And that is great for the star trails because you can find the North Star very easily. Uh, and if you don't know how to find that in the Northern Hemisphere, then look for Ursa Minor and it is at the tail of Ursa Minor. So Ursa Minor is the Little Dipper and it is at the very top edge of the Little Dipper. Yeah, you can also use the app on your phone if you have like Google Sky or if you have photo pills or anything like that. Those will show you where the North Star is. So you find the North Star and set your composition up. So once you have your composition set up, then let's talk about some like ballpark settings. And this is just very ballpark because it can change on if the moon is out or if you're in a dark sky or a light sky or wherever. But ballpark settings is you're going to want somewhere in the ballpark of like ISO 1600 all the way up to 6400. And you're going to want a shutter speed of like 15 to 30 seconds. So again, those are ballpark settings, but just so you know where to to start. So what I like to do though, is because you don't wanna be waiting around when you're trying to compose, is crank your ISO all the way up, as high as it goes. Like on my, on my 1DX2 and my 5D4, it goes up to like 256,000 or something. And then you can drop it to like a one or two second shutter speed, and then that will help you get a faster image so that you can see your composition. And it'll be noisy as all heck, but that's okay because we're gonna lower it and set it back to the real settings once we get our composition. So once you have that, then drop your ISO back down, start at you know 3200 or whatever you need, and then use the 500 rule and figure out your shutter speed. And once you have all that stuff, start testing. Take a couple of test shots at the settings that you want when you have your composition right. This is when we start the star trail. Now there's two ways that we're gonna do this. First, we're gonna have a sip of tea because I'm cold. Okay, that's much better. Okay, so the two ways you can do star trails is one, you can do a super long exposure. And for something like this, like this is a 90 second exposure. But there's a trick to that. I didn't actually take a full 90 second exposure and I'll tell you why. The other way that you can do it is to do a time lapse. So both of these are gonna need to do a long exposure or to do a time lapse. Both methods are gonna require you to have some sort of trigger. I use the Alpine Labs Spark and the Alpine Labs Pulse, but those are expensive triggers and you don't need those. You can just get a simple cheapo uh, trigger from Amazon for like 15 bucks or whatever, and that will do the trick. But if you're gonna do the time lapse, then you need an intervalometer. So if you're gonna do the long exposure, then you set your trigger up and you're gonna to wanna to set it for, you know, you're just gonna be taking a guess here. It just depends on how long, the longer the exposure, the longer the star trails. So if you want the star trails to be like complete circles, you're gonna to need to leave that running for at least 90 minutes, probably anywhere up to like even three or four hours. Uh, but again, like a shot like this, this was uh, like between 60 and 90 minutes. 
the added benefit of doing the time lapse is then you get the time lapse, but you're going to have to render that. And uh, I have other videos on time lapses, and I'm going to have more videos on astro time lapses specifically and how to deal with them. But for now, let's just say that you take uh, a time lapse for an hour and a half long, and you come away with a couple hundred shots. So you're going to take those shots and you're gonna put them in Photoshop and you're gonna open them up as layers in Photoshop and then you're gonna select all those layers and then once they're all selected, then you're just gonna change the blending mode to lighten. That's all you need to do. That's the very basic way to do it. And this will take a long time for it to load into Photoshop because you're loading 200 photos. So you're gonna have to have a decent computer. And if you don't, it's gonna take a while. So you go get you some tea and you wait for it to load. Once they're all loaded, you go into blend mode, you change that to lighten and bam, there it is. There's your star trail. But if you do the long exposure, you don't gotta do any of that. You're gonna get one shot. The downside to long exposures and the reason why I personally don't do them is number one, I'm a time-lapse photographer. I love time-lapses. Therefore, I will always benefit from having an extra time-lapse. Number two, I don't know how many fingers I have going on because they're frozen. But number two is the, the main reason why I don't do long exposures for anything is because of the longer you leave the longer the exposure, the longer you leave your sensor open, your shutter open, and your sensor is absorbing light, the hotter it's going to get, which means you're going to have hot pixels. Hot pixels look like this, and they make your image look like crap. They are easily fixed in Photoshop if you go in there and take the time to manually uh, heal them out in Lightroom or Photoshop, but that's time consuming, and I just don't like doing that to my sensor. So that's why I do the time lapse instead, and then take the effort and the extra time in Photoshop to blend them. All right, so I know I'm talking a lot here and I would rather uh, go back and see how my camera's doing and get moving and get drinking this tea. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, I will make a separate video on how I'm editing this stuff. And I have this video here, if you wanna check that out, about how I made this night image here. But yeah, it's like 20 degrees Fahrenheit right now and uh, I'm ready to go home. So I'm gonna wrap this up. If you guys have any questions about anything that I talked about or didn't talk about, leave those in the comments below and I'll definitely answer them. If you like this stuff and you wanna see more, definitely make sure you subscribe to the channel. I've got new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Everything else you need to know is in the description below. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe. Happy New Year because uh, it's just after New Year again. And thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.